Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and thank you so so much for tuning in with me today. Now in today's video I've got something really really exciting prepared for you guys. I actually gathered a couple more new releases out of the clean beauty world and yeah we're gonna be putting all of this newly released makeup on my face today and yeah we're just gonna be playing around with a bunch of newly released makeup. I feel like all of the brands were pumping out the spring releases one after the next. Just go, go, go. There are so many products that I wanted to try out and I'm so happy I was able to prepare another new makeup video for you all because there were so many interesting releases this time around. So I actually have such an exciting lineup in terms of products prepared for you guys. I've got some of the big names in clean beauty today. I've got Kosas, I got some new product by Ilya, I have a new palette by Aether Beauty, um, there's some stuff from Victoria Beckham and also a new brand to my channel, Item beauty. Also do let me know, have you tried anything that was released lately? Have you been interested in some of the products that I'm about to talk about? Do drop me a comment and also in case you are new here, I would absolutely love to have you on here. You just gotta click that subscribe button, ring the bell in order to stay notified about my upcoming videos and if you do enjoy this video at any point, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. That would be extremely appreciated. I also just want to point out that all of these products that I'm using on my face today and that I'm always using on my channel are of course 100% cruelty free and most of them are vegan as well. I would always suggest to double check the ingredients list yourself so you're sure that what you're buying is actually what you want and hopefully this video can help you make a decision if you want to try out something or not. Okay you guys but I feel like without no further ado we should just go barefaced and play around with all of these new makeup releases. All right, you guys, I am barefaced right now. And before we are going to be diving into these new releases, I did want to use a primer that I actually featured in my last video, which is kind of still new, but I just love it so much. And I wasn't able to try a new primer. So for today's video, I wanted to use this one. This is by Hourglass and this is their Vanish Airbrush Primer. And this retails for $56. So this is Hourglass latest release when it comes to primers. And I mean, I featured this in my other video and I've been loving it. This is one of these primers that really surprised me in that sense because I did not expect this to be that great. This is truly amazing. If you want to blur anything, if you have a little bit more combination skin, a little bit more on the oilier side or on the normal side and you just want to blur your pores, you want a flawless makeup base, this is a true hero, I've got to say. Sometimes these blurring primers can be a little bit more on the drying, on the mattifying side of things. But with this, I find this to not be drying at all. So we're going to put this on my face and you will see the dewiness that I still have on my face is mainly because of my skincare. It's not because I'm that shiny. Actually, I'm not, but it's because of the skincare still sitting on there. So you'll be able to see how well this is going to blur out my pores, smoothen out my base, and how well this is going to mattify. It's a really nice creamy primer. It almost feels like a gel. So I'm gonna be clipping my hair back and then we're gonna apply the product. So I'm gonna take a little bit of product. You don't wanna use too much. That's how much I would use. All my shine straight off the bat has disappeared and my base just looks smoothened out, sort of blurred, a little bit mattified, but not too much, you know, I don't look like dry or cakey or anything. I feel like this leaves the skin very soft as well, so makeup kind of goes on, glides on much better. And yeah, I mean, I really truly love this. You know, it sinks into the skin, it's not sitting on top of the skin. This does not leave a tackiness or any of that. It's literally just a smoothing primer. And 
kind of blurring too. I actually put a little bit more product on my problem areas when it comes to pores, which is around here. I always feel like my pores are a little bit more noticeable right there. So I kind of focused the product a little bit on here as well. And I feel like it has done a great, great job. I mean, I would definitely recommend this product, although it's a little bit pricier, but I truly, truly have enjoyed it. So if you have tried this, let me know in the comments if this works as well for you as it does work for me. All right, so let's move on to a new release. Let's move on to a new foundation. And I'm so, so excited for this one because this is by no other than Kosas. This is the Kosas Revealer Skin Improving Foundation SPF 25 and this retails for $42. Kosas is definitely no stranger to my channel. I have reviewed this brand multiple times. I actually made a video on their Revealer Concealer, which is kind of the matching concealer to this foundation, this new release. And I actually did name this video, is the Revealer Concealer a new foundation? So two years ago when they released the concealer, I kind of already had a feeling that this concealer would be a great foundation. And guess what product I have in my hands now? I almost cannot believe it, but they actually made a foundation out of their concealer. I actually have tried this already a couple of times, so I do have a little bit of an opinion on this. So before I'm gonna put this onto my face, let's actually have a quick look at the website, what they're claiming and what this foundation is all about. So on the website, they are claiming a medium coverage SPF treatment foundation with a natural dreamy finish that instantly blends like a second skin to blur, visibly smooth texture and minimizes pores. So in terms of ingredients, Ingredients. There is a powerhouse blend of hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, peptides, squalane, vitamin B5, arnica and caffeine, all clinically proven to hydrate, brighten, soothe, plump and protect. Uh, so this is dermatology tested, safe for sensitive skin, non-acnegenic, hypoallergenic. So they actually have released this foundation in 36 shades, which is a really good solid shade range. I feel like there's a great variety in shades. However, I do want to mention one thing about Kosas, which is their undertones. Their undertones tend to lean quite on the yellow side. So just be aware of that. So usually I do have a neutral undertone, but with Kosas, I tend to get the pink undertone because I kind of feel like their pink undertones are not really pink they are kind of neutral. So I do want to point that out specifically. So I actually picked this up in the shade light medium neutral 200. Light medium with subtle pink undertones. It does match my skin tone quite well. And the undertone for me is perfect. So that says a lot because I don't have a pink undertone. This to me is a perfect example of a neutral undertone, quite a perfect neutral undertone to be honest with you. But I don't see the pink. They actually have released a sponge with this and I do have it. I tried it. I really don't like this sponge. Maybe I'm just a creature of habit and I just always love my Wonder Beauty sponge. I always, always will use this. This is just a perfect sort of sponge for my face. This foundation is best applied, at least on my skin type, with a sponge. I feel like you could use a brush as well, but with the brush you might experience a little bit more streaking. This foundation, the texture of this is super runny. It's very lightweight. Also, what I love about this foundation is that this is a water-based foundation. It does not feel heavy on your skin uh, because oil-based foundations, I always find them kind of like heavy on my skin and I don't like them as much. Now, in terms of coverage, I'm gonna get a light to medium coverage. Really, this is quite a buildable coverage, but I feel like you need a couple of layers to make it more of a medium to full coverage. I honestly thought I would be dealing with a full coverage foundation here, but this is pretty light to medium on the first layer and then you can build it up to a solid medium, but it's not really a full coverage foundation. I'm just gonna tell you straight off the bat that concealer has more coverage than the foundation. Anyway, I'm gonna shake it up and I'm gonna put a little bit out. It's not as runny as the lawless one, but it will run down my finger. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit.
so this is what you can achieve with one layer. Here is my bare skin in comparison. I feel like the coverage level is pretty decent. It is more light to medium because I mean, you can still see my real skin poking through. Also the finish of this, I wouldn't call this too dewy. It does not feel dewy at all on the skin, but it does give you some healthy sort of radiance, you know, thing. I feel like this has a very natural finish, you know, it's not satin, it's not matte, it's not dewy, it's very skin-like and I kind of like that. But yeah, let's actually do the other side of my face and then we can build up the foundation later. So this is pretty much what you can achieve with one layer. I really do like the finish. I like how this is so easy to blend out with the sponge. I feel like this was effortless and it looks so, so natural on my skin. Like personally, I really do like this, you know. I feel like with only one layer, it did a pretty good job in just, you know, evening out my skin tone and everything. But as I can tell, I mean, I can still see a little bit of redness. I mean, I don't have too much redness, but just a little bit on my chin, a little bit right here poking through. But in general, I feel like it did a decent job on the very first layer. We are going to apply a second layer on top of this and hopefully get a pretty decent medium coverage out of it. So I'm going to apply a little bit more. All right, you guys, what are we thinking? I do want to say, though, I could not, like, just go out like that without powdering this foundation. I don't think it's that blurring necessarily, you know? I can still see quite a bit of my texture around here. If I would have some texture, it would be around this side of my face. And, I mean, I can still see it. And I would even say it is a little bit accentuated because of this radiant shine. So if I wouldn't have used my hourglass primer or if I wouldn't powder this face down, I don't know how happy I would be with that. Overall, I like it, you know, it's nice. I really have been enjoying this foundation. It's not the first time that I'm putting it on. The only thing I will say is I felt like this foundation does not last that long. I feel like it's kind of losing coverage after four hours. And at the end of my day, I sometimes feel like the foundation kind of wears off easier than some other foundations, you know. Um, and I love it much more than the Fit Glow foundation that I tried in my other video. That Fit Glow foundation felt so heavy on my skin. That was an oil-based foundation. And I just... Maybe it has better coverage, but I just didn't like it on my skin. So when I tried this out, this, I like it on my skin. You know, I can't feel it. I just have to powder it down, basically. And that's about it. But before we're moving on to the powder and powdering this down, let's actually move on to an amazing concealer I got my hands on. And this concealer was recommended widely over the internet. So I'm so, so happy to actually have it for today's video. So this is by Item Beauty and this is their Air Hug Concealer and this retails for $23. So actually I've never talked about this concealer on my channel and I love this concealer. When this came out, I picked this one up because Reagan, I'm going to link her YouTube channel down below. She actually recommended this concealer on her channel and she really loved it. And afterwards I watched some other people and they also loved it. I feel like this is the best concealer one of the best concealers I've ever tried. And I'm so grateful for Reagan to recommending this. Like, this is so good, I've actually ordered a backup because I feel like I'm gonna be out of this soon because I have used this every single day. It's that great. So when I picked this one up, honestly, I had no idea about the founder. The founder of this brand is a TikTok star called Addison Ray. Now, I don't even have TikTok, so I have no idea about who this person is. I am so, so sorry. I'm so sorry if I, I don't know you, Addison Ray, but you make amazing makeup. <laughs> That's a fact. Like, this stuff is just out of this world 
amazing. Also the presentation of this um, packaging, I mean, come on, this looks like a freaking expensive concealer. It's huge. How much product is in there? Well, there's 10 milliliters of product. I kind of get this feeling that most concealers don't have that much product. Most concealers have eight milliliters or seven milliliters of product. This one has 10.8 milliliters of product, which is big because it's quite huge, you know, it's, it's really big. So she actually released this concealer in 20 shades. I've got the shade 200, which is really good. It's light with neutral undertones. And this works perfect for me. This works all over my face. It works for under my eye. So let's have a look. It comes with a doe foot. I feel like mine is about to be empty, to be honest. I don't know how much product I still have left in here. I already have my backup, as I said. This does not crease. $23, guys, for 10 milliliters. It's amazing. I definitely want to conceal on my chin and my under eyes and just maybe the center of my face. So I'm gonna just... Scrape the remaining product out of here. This has quite a creamy texture without feeling heavy on the skin at all. And I actually like to blend this out with a sponge as well. I mean, this concealer is astonishing, you guys. Um, I've also done something that I usually don't do, which is bring the concealer up to my eyelid, uh, onto my eyelids. Usually I do put the Lila B concealer on top of there to prime my eyelids. I'm just gonna go in with a brush and just take it a little bit around here. Just the way this looks on, on my under eye, the way this has covered up like the last bit of just discoloration is fantastic. The coverage, the finish of this concealer is what really gets me to love this product. I truly love this. Like, I don't know. This concealer is magic in a bottle. I mean, this is not a product that has been around for ages. So if I already ordered a second one, that is very, very telling to how much I love this product. So thanks to everyone who has recommended this. So I feel like my base is pretty much there. I feel like I achieved a solid kind of coverage level, something that I'm happy with. So the next step would be, of course, to set my face. And I do have a new powder that I have recently picked up. It might not be the newest release, but no matter what, I just wanted to use it today. So this is the Always an Optimist Soft Radiance Setting Powder, and this retails for $22. So Rare Beauty actually just had launched their skin tint, but I really don't care for that skin tint, so I did not pick it up and I won't pick it up. But the powder that she came out with before, I was like, I gotta try this. I go through setting powders really quick as well. So that is something I always like to have around. And if I can find a good powder, why not? So here it is, it's quite a big jar. It comes with 10 grams, which is pretty standard for powders. So what I really love about this powder is it comes in three shades. I have it in the shade light. It has a little bit of a pinky undertone, which is very, very interesting. And I love the packaging. This is so cool. Like you guys know, I always critique powder packaging. And this has this really cool kind of lock on here. You can just unlock. So the shade light is described as a soft pink for fair to light complexions. So she actually released this in five shades. Now I have the lightest shade. It's fine for me. It has a little bit of a pink undertone. I really freaking love this powder, you guys. It's actually super blurring. It's gonna sap my makeup into place. And I have used this maybe three times since I got it. I've just been really, really liking it. So I'm gonna take a little bit out and let's sap my eyes first. This is actually pink, but it does not show up really as pink on the skin and it is pretty sheer does not really have that much coverage, like I don't see it. So you can tell this just looks so much smoother, so much more blurred out 
so much more set into place than this side. Also kind of eliminates the, the shine just so nicely without it looking dry or cakey or matte, you know? So yeah, I mean, you can definitely see the difference what this powder can do. So let's do this also on the other side and then I'm gonna go all over my face. I don't look shiny anymore, I don't look like radiant or anything, but I still look super natural. Don't be intimidated by this pink color, because as you can tell, I mean, I don't look pink or anything, so it does not really show up. But I feel like it's nice in terms of just balancing out your skin tone. It also does not leave a white cast, so my base is done. So let's actually move on to some complexion colors. Let's actually move on to my bronzer, my blush, and my highlighter. And for today's video, all of these three products are gonna be kind of in one because I picked up a newly released palette by Ilia Beauty. So this is by Ilia Beauty and this is their multi-stick palette and this retails for $42. So I was so excited when I saw this release, this palette, because Ilia actually came out with a couple of new multi-stick shades. So they're actually cream blushes in a stick format and I've got this in the shade at last and I also have this in the shade Dreamer. So these are the two shades that I have in the stick formula and they actually came out with new shades in this format. Now they also came out with a palette that I grabbed and in that palette you're actually gonna get these new shades, some of them. So these sticks they are kind of more on the dewier side so we're gonna add back some radiance um, to my face soon but yeah I really just was so intrigued by this palette and here it is. I mean it's so stunning. They're all creams as well so if you were a fan of this stick formula you might be want to grab this one because this is so good for the price point you get a multitude of shades you can do everything with this one palette i'm going to do my whole complexion today with this you have a bronzer you have four blush shades and you have a highlighter this bronzing shade is new this shade whisper is new so the shade at last is the one that i have in my multi stick already so that's the only double shade that I've got now and it's exactly the same. Everything else is pretty new to me. I'm gonna show you this swatched on my arm so you can see all the shades. We are gonna be starting off with this bronzer. The bronzer is called In The City. This is such a beautiful bronzer. I did not expect this to work so so well. It has a pretty sort of neutral undertone too. Uh, it's not too warm actually. So the bronzer when you swatch it, it looks so shimmery. Let's try this on my nose. I'm gonna go in with a different brush here though, with a smaller one. I'm gonna take this angled sort of eye brush for this purpose and just put it into the brush. It is pretty dewy though. I don't know if you can tell, it is kind of more of a shiny sort of bronzer. It's not completely matte in finish as a cream. I just kind of regret that I got this in the palette, not in the stick format, because I assume it's much easier, you know, to take it from the stick onto your brush as well. But it looks really, really stunning. So I feel like moving on from the bronzer, now going into the blush, I already tried out this Whisper shade and I really freaking love this. All of these shades are really stunning, but I feel like I'm, I want to, you know, use Whisper today. And now for this, I'm going to use my favorite sort of brush for blush application. And it's also by Ilia and it's their complexion brush. This is perfect for the apples of the cheek. So the shade Whisper is described as a peach pink. Um, to me, it has a slight red 
undertone. I mean, this is a little bit red. Okay, so let's go on to my cheek and apply the Shade Whisper. It's so pretty. I really do love this shade. I feel like you can also build this up. Like, you know, if you want a little bit more pigment, you can definitely build it up. It is definitely more of a dewier finish though. I will say the cream blush formula does give you this almost slight wet look. It works perfectly on top of powder because I just applied all of this on top of powder and it works. It does not interrupt my foundation or anything, but I feel like I look almost like I want to powder my face again. Do you know what I mean? It's going to be a dewy finish. So now I'm going to go in with the last step, which is the highlighter right here. And this is called Cosmic Dancer. I'm not the biggest fan of this highlighter though. <laughs> Gotta admit, in general, cream highlighters are very, very hard for me because they are just they just end up looking sticky most of the time or just not showing up that much. Also the shade here, what are they describing this at? Soft Champagne Pearl. A kind of, I don't know if it's that soft champagne -y. It looks pretty golden to me. Anyway, let's apply it. I have to say I'm not the biggest fan. It's not doing that much. It's okay. But also I don't, never know how to apply a cream highlighter like am i using a sponge i always just end up going in with my fingers because i have more control over it so i don't know i just feel like this just adds i mean you can see it pretty well in the camera i would not even dare to put this highlighter on the, the tip of my nose I really would not dare to do so because I feel like this just gives me I don't know I just don't I think I don't like the texture of this that's what it is it's not the easiest to apply and I'm not the biggest fan of what it actually does I almost feel like I kind of want to powder my face again I'm just gonna put a little just a little bit of powder on top yeah that did the job it's just too much for me, you know. I mean, you can still see the reflectiveness. I feel like you can definitely powder these cream blushes down if they're a little bit too radiant. They are a little bit too dewy for my liking, but I still like them, you know. I love the color and I love how this actually looks. These new colors are beautiful. And if you wanted to try out a couple of colors at once, instead of buying all these little multi-sticks separately, you can get all of these colors in one palette. And I think it's really nice because there are not a lot of cream palettes around. Okay guys, so that was it for my complexion. Uh, I mean, with that palette, we only had one product. So yeah, let's move on to the next category. Let's move on to my eyes. So this product was again, one of these products that when I received it, I just could not put it down anymore. So since I've got this, I've been using this pretty much every day in my routine. I mean, I did have a couple of eye pencils that I loved previously. In the past, I used to use my hourglass pencil, but this one is definitely a lot better and also a lot cheaper. And I mean, I've been really, really, truly enjoying this so much again that I've bought myself um, a backup. I also go quite fast through eyebrow products in general because I use that every day. So again, this is by Item Beauty and this is their Brow Chow Ultra Fine Brow Definer and it retails for $19. Addison has created an amazing product. This is so good, you guys. You can't even see the pencil anymore. It's all the way down. I've used so, so much of this product already. The only thing I don't like so much about it is this little weird brush. I mean, in the beginning, I was really intrigued. I was like, oh my God, cool. I can just sort of comb through my eyebrows. But then I kind of started realizing that this brush is kind of, it gets a little bit yucky and it's actually not so great once you apply the product to uh, comb through with this. I feel like it's not the best to really precisely go through it. It's kind of 
a cool idea, but kind of gimmicky in the same way, you know, it's just not so practical. So I'm not the biggest fan of this. So usually what I do is I just use a spoolie and I just comb through with a spoolie that I have, you know, you can also use a spoolie from your other eyebrow products. So she came out with four shades. I have this in the shade medium brown. What I really like about this pencil in particular is first off the shape comes in a triangle. I always love these because they kind of imitate the shape of your hair. This pencil actually fills in, it actually stays and it sticks to your skin. I was really surprised when I used this. So I'm gonna fill in my eyebrows with the pencil and then afterwards I'm gonna go over with my, of course, my Kosas Airbrow Gel. I've got this in the shade Soft Brown. That is my second step. But yeah, first off, we're gonna do the pencil. I mean, you can definitely tell the difference. This one is filled in now with the pencil, this one is not. So you can definitely tell how good this product is because I only did a couple of like swipes and it's already looking very different than it did before. So let's do it on the other eye as well. Right, you guys I feel like my brows are pretty much filled in I'm just gonna go over with my Kosas airbrow gel but you can tell how well this actually filled in my brows with just a couple of swipes you know it is a fantastic fantastic liner All right, you guys, so let's actually move on to my eyeshadow for today. And for today, I do have the brand new palette by Aether Beauty. So this is the Aether Beauty Desert Sunset palette, and this retails for $48. Now, you guys may know Aether Beauty is no stranger at all to my channel. I have reviewed pretty much a lot of their eyeshadow palettes, and this was the latest release. Um, before that, she came out with the Moonlight Crystal palette, which I truly, truly enjoyed. And I've done a couple of videos on their latest releases with their palette. So when I saw that this one came out, I was like, okay, I'm intrigued. It looks like a very wearable color story compared to the Moonlight palette. This was more of like maybe a user-friendly color story. Let's put it that way. It is super golden and peachy. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't think this is my favorite color story of all the Aether beauty palettes that I have. I feel like the rose quartz one is still the one that I love the most. I'm not sure if she meant for this to be the replacement of her previous palette. So this used to be her summer solstice palette. This one is still, I would say, a little bit more wearable. You can't buy this anymore. This is the old version, I would say, maybe of this. Maybe she thought about, you know, a similar color story to this and then she came out with this. This definitely does have more of a peachier and more of a golden vibe than this. I feel like with this, it's definitely more muted. It's not as flashy as this one. And yeah, it's a different formula, you guys. I mean, she does not make these anymore. Just wanted to point that out that it kind of reminded me of that palette, but I'm not sure if that was her intention actually when she created this one. So we're still gonna be using this palette today and I'm still gonna create a beautiful look with this. Um, I'm gonna probably not use this. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's not my favorite shade. I'm not sure what this one is doing here. It might just be the odd one out. I mean, I'm not gonna go into this. I feel like we're gonna go and do a little bit more of a golden sort of look. So I'm gonna start with the shade Desert Sand, which is this more mustardy, sort of almost yellow undertone brown. It's really nice for the crease. I'm gonna start off with that. The formula, it's a little bit uh, powdery, but there's gonna be a lot of pigment, so I don't wanna overload my brush. I'm gonna tap the excess off.
I really, really love this shade though. It looks almost like a mustardy sort of brown. And yeah, I mean, it builds up really nice. Um, feels like a pretty typical sort of matte Aether Beauty shade formula. I'm gonna go in with the shade Sedona. So this one right here. It's pretty red in undertone. A very sort of plummy, well not plummy, but a very sort of reddish brown. Before I'm moving on with my lids and everything, I'm going to go down to my lower lash line and as per usual, I'm just going to put in my favorite Satin Kayal liner, my eyeliner by Victoria Beckham in the shade Coco. I freaking love this one. So I'm just going to put that in my waterline real quick. All right, so now for my lower lash line, I do actually want to go in with the shade Desert Sand as well. I'm going to take it a little bit and just place it right here. All right, so I'm gonna use a little bit of the shade Mesquite, which is this deeper brown here. And I'm gonna put that onto my lower lash line as well just to really enhance this. It's almost black. Woo! Woo, that is maybe a little bit too much. So I'm gonna just go really gentle with this. Okay, you guys, so let's continue with my lid. I definitely kind of wanna dig my finger into some beautiful gold now. I mean, I'm so tempted for this. Maybe we're gonna top it off, but I kind of want to use this shade. So this is the shade Eternal, and I'm gonna put that all over my lid, okay? Because I feel like that is such a beautiful, a little bit more, maybe cool toned gold. I'm gonna take this on my finger. I'm gonna just try and put it on my lid. This is very much more of like a metallic shade. Um, really beautiful gold. It looks much warmer on your eye than it actually looks in the pan. I'm so confused if I should do something with the pink at all. I don't think I will. Because I feel like if I would add any of these two, it might ruin the whole look that I'm kind of going for. I'm going for a little bit more of a golden look. This shade is... It's not purple at all. It is so peachy. In the pan it looks purple, but it's just, it's not. It's copper. <laughs> you look into the eyeshadow palette and it's something different than it's on the eyes. Sometimes that's the thing with Aether. So I'm going to use this shade right here on my lid a little bit. It's the shade Sunrise. It doesn't feel so crumbly actually. It doesn't, this one feels a little bit softer. This one not so much. So let's put this in the center maybe. Okay, so let's actually, you know, highlight the corner of my eyes with this shade right here, which is the shade Twilight. That's my eye look pretty much done. Now, I do want to say, I mean, I don't mind gold, but I feel like this palette is just so golden. Even this shade, like you may think you get some variety and it's going to end up looking copper. To me, I don't know. It's a very, very golden palette. And I only have like a little bit of peach option. So this is not my favorite color story. It's also... Maybe not my favorite eye look because I'm not the biggest gold fan. I mean, I don't mind gold. 
I'm just not the biggest fan of it. I, I don't mind a warm eye look though. I feel like it is looking nice. I feel like it does suit my eyes. I just feel like it does not personally speak to me as much as all of the other color stories that she came out with. But yeah, that's that. So let's move on to the last step of my eyes. Let's actually move on to a new mascara. So this is the Milk Makeup Rice Mascara and this retails for $28. So on the website, they are saying an award-winning natural looking mascara that lifts, lengthens and gives weightless volume for next level lashes that stay curled, defined and clump free. This product is 93% natural, vegan, clean, cruelty free, paraben free and fragrance free. So here it is, the mascara. I've got to say this packaging it's so trippy it's so cool and it kind of feels like rubber in your hand but is this the most sustainable sort of packaging definitely not okay but this mascara has one big drawback which is the packaging it looks nice but it's so weird this packaging and this has something to do with the stopper being too narrow like the opening it's just too narrow this time. Uh, usually the default is that it's too wide, the opening. This is way too narrow because once you get the product out, it's gonna be a mess to put it back in. And you might be able to see just from when I do this, just the residue gets stuck all over just the border of the opening and I mean, come on, you know, that is just basic packaging. So it's a little bit messy just because of that opening. But otherwise, I really enjoy this mascara. It does not smudge. It rinses off so easily and it's actually pretty effective. So the bristle brush is slightly curved, but see what I mean? It's just this product is so annoying like you're gonna waste so much product just by not being able to get it back into the packaging so i'm gonna curl my lashes and then we're gonna apply it so i feel like i had a better time with this side of my eye i mean it's super pretty, you know, it is quite volumizing, but it's not that lengthening, but it does give me something. I feel like I would definitely use this mascara because apart from that packaging default, it does not really have many defaults. It's not smudging, it's clump free, and it does like lift my lashes like quite a bit though. You can tell here that it does a pretty decent job in just lifting them, you know? So let me know if you had a chance to try this out at all and if you like it or not. So let's actually move on to the last category. Let's move on to the lips. Now for the lips, I do have a new lip gloss. So this is by Victoria Beckham Beauty and this is a posh gloss and this retails for $28. So Victoria Beckham has come out with some new shades in her posh gloss formula, which only existed in clear and I really didn't care about it. I never picked up the clear formula, so I had no idea how this was going to be. So she actually came out with four different shades. So four different colors instead of just a clear gloss. These colors, again, Victoria Beckham has this amazing sense for beautiful colors. I feel like, the colors she releases are always so innovative and so intriguing. I wasn't able to pick out a color. I was like, I don't know which one to get because they all look beautiful. And I actually picked up two shades. Now, obviously I can only put one uh, shade on for today, but I might just show you both of the shades. I might just apply um, one color and then the color I want to wear at the end. So I got the shade tan line and I got the shade poolside. So the two in the middle. So not the lightest and not the deepest, but the two in the middle. Here they are. They are so stunning. When I saw these colors in real, I was like, wow, I don't even have lip glosses that have these colors. And the packaging again. Victoria is 
amazing when it comes to packaging. This is so luxe. I think this is glass. So just be careful not to drop this. I feel like for today, I want to use this shade, the shade tan line. That is going to go so well with my eye look. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to apply the color poolside first, uh, which is such a beautiful, muted, dusty, almost purple. It's just brown, purple, just beautiful. Also, these do have pigment, but they actually transfer to your lips quite translucent. So it's actually more of a sheer pigment, like medium pigment, I would say. It's not too much pigment. It still looks like a gloss, but it's going to give you a hint of color, though. Just to show you guys, just to demonstrate it, I'm just going to put it on my bare lips. It has this kind of gel consistency. It does not feel like thin. It doesn't really feel slippery, like it's moving around. It feels like a cushiony gel, which I love. So I love the formula. I love this color. I did not think it would match my eye look as well as it actually does, but I'm still going to remove it and actually apply that shade tan line. This is going to be a little bit sheerer, a little bit brighter in color a little bit more sort of nude has this sort of beigey undertone which i feel like victoria always has this sort of beige undertone in her products which i love this just the shade is so insanely stunning you know this is going to match pretty much every kind of makeup look you're going to do this shade because it's so beautiful nude. I love the formula. I love how this makes my lip look. I know it's just a lip gloss, but not every lip gloss is the same. And I feel like this one is definitely worth it. If you're a makeup lover, if you want a good lip gloss with some beautiful sort of undertone and with just this beautiful reflect, I would feel very confident to uh, recommend these because they're really really good all right you guys so this is my final look this was pretty much everything i wanted to review today do let me know what your thoughts are on these new products have you tried out anything yet do drop me a comment below i'm always looking forward reading them and if you did enjoy this video if you did find it helpful uh, I would really appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up. And in case you have not subscribed to the channel, why not hit that button? You can also ring the bell to stay notified about my upcoming videos. And yeah, I shall be seeing you on here very, very soon with the next one. So please do take care. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye. <laughs>